But, in this 12th episode, we are going to talk exclusively about the chiller with scroll compressor. If this topic interests you, stay with us and of course subscribe to our channel. In a previous video the subject was discussed a little, this time we are going to delve deeper into it, because there are many more things to study. If you want to start our series from scratch, a link to the first episode is currently popping up. The scroll compressor chiller is a water chiller used in a range of refrigeration capacity that we can classify between low and medium. The limitation of scroll type compressors is that their capacity is generally less than 25 tons of refrigeration, a very low value if we compare it with other types of compressors. To achieve a high power value in the chiller with scroll compressor, we are going to need several compressors, so that when added together, they achieve a higher capacity value. As scroll compressor chillers are not for such high capacities, it is common to see them with air-cooled condensers, although this conclusion should not be taken as a general rule. Let's first study the advantages of scroll compressor chillers. 1. Scroll compressors achieve 100% volumetric efficiency, reducing chilled water plant energy costs. 2. The use of the scroll compressor eliminates re-expansion losses which often occur with each piston stroke, in reciprocating compressor chiller models. 3. In scroll compressor chillers, valve losses are eliminated, because there are no suction valves. 4. Scroll compressors have a totally hermetic squirrel cage induction motor, 100% cooled by suction gas. 5. Suction gas cooling of the scroll compressor motor prolongs its life by ensuring it stays at a low, stable temperature. 6. The scroll compressor motor also serves as a barrier to liquid refrigerant, which can migrate through the suction line when a compressor is shut down. 7. Liquid refrigerant remains in the compressor casing. When starting, liquid refrigerant must pass the engine before reaching compression which is a barrier to its reaching the scroll compressor scrolls. 8. Suction gas cooling also eliminates the need for external cooling. 9. The sequence of operation of the scroll compressors of a chiller allows the capacity of the chilled water plant to match the system load. 10. One scroll compressor in the chiller can be shut down, while another scroll compressor continues to run, delivering full capacity and efficiency. 11. Chiller capacity regulation is done simply by controlling the number of scroll compressors on. 12. This control can be carried out taking into account the temperature of the water at the outlet of the cooler or evaporator casing. For example, after a while, if the chilled water temperature is not reached, then another scroll compressor must automatically turn on to produce more cold. 13. Another advantage of a multi-compressor chiller is that when a compressor fails, you automatically have backup compressors and the machine can work, but not at 100% capacity. 14. Today we can find chili peppers with an inverter type scroll compressor, which can further improve the efficiency of the chilled water plant. 15. In addition, if a chiller has several scroll compressors, it is not necessary that they all be inverter, because with one that works with this technology, the adaptation of the equipment to the cooling needs of the plant is already achieved, and with it the high efficiency values. Dot. Yeah. Disadvantages of chillers with scroll compressors. 1. The main disadvantage is that by having a greater number of compressors, we increase the probability of failures due to an increase in equipment. This last disadvantage diminishes if we take into account that scroll compressors have few moving parts and are therefore very reliable. 2. Another disadvantage is the control of the lubrication of the compressors in parallel, which must be rigorous and as automatic as possible. 3. An oil equalization system designed for correct performance and reliability in the entire operating environment is required. 4. An interconnecting tube at the bottom of the compressor below the oil level ensures oil balance. 5. Small differences in crankcase pressure can result in a significantly fluctuating oil level. 6. Some scroll compressors have an additional connection for gas equalization, 
and to keep the pressures inside the compressor casing stable and prevent oil level imbalances. 7. The oil separator at the discharge of each compressor must separate 95% of the oil mixed in the discharge gas, and return the oil back to the low pressure side of the compressor. 8. When compressors stop, excess lubricating oil in one compressor can flow to another compressor through the oil compensating tube. 9. A check valve in the discharge pipe of each compressor ensures that refrigerant is not returned when one of the compressors is running. A link to our next episode is currently popping up.